Well, hello, and welcome to the Jays Cultural Arts Corner podcast. As usual, we are coming to you from the pristine, unparalleled podcast studio at Cobalt Communications here in Fenton, Missouri. I'm John Wilson, Director of Cultural Arts at the J, and today is Episode 7, which is a preview of the 25th anniversary of the New Jewish Theater. We're having a celebration and a fundraiser. It is taking place on Sunday, September 10th, from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at our Creve Core campus. Now, if you attend this ticketed event, you are going to have free food, heavy appetizers, free drinks. You're going to have a celebration cake. You're going to watch performances from some of our past productions starring those original actors. And then you're going to watch a retrospective video and hear some very special remarks and a preview of the 2024 season by artistic director Rebecca Scallett. And all of this is going to be hosted by our MC, our NGT audience favorite and local actor, Will Bonfiglio. Now, joining me in studio for this preview podcast is Michelle Seiler. And Michelle has been the New Jewish Theater costume designer since 2001. That's a lot of shows. Welcome, Michelle. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Uh, it's really great whenever we have any of our staff in studio and we just get to hang out and find out what they're about. And there's a lot to find out about you, Michelle. Uh, so I have been told. So let me just start with this first question. So from what I understand, you are very active in the Jewish community. And so from that perspective, can you tell me what you think the role is of new Jewish theater uh, to that community and how, how we serve that community best? Well, I have to say, you know, our, our mission is that we're putting like a Jewish lens onto the theater, our theater through a Jewish lens. But I would, I would really argue that it's more of a kaleidoscope because our Jewish community is so, um, there's such a variety of people, there's such a variety of uh, synagogue life and other cultural life. And, and so what New Jewish Theater does is show histories across, across centuries, across continents and countries. We show contemporary shows of, about people of the Jewish faith. So our plays are just, I think, resonate both with the Jewish community and beyond. And But the Jewish lens, or kaleidoscope, as I'll say, I think is a great starting point. And, um, and I think just when I talk to people in the community, they're very invested in our theater. And I really appreciate that. It's what keeps live theater live happening. And I think their input and their being so close in a black box theater is really a joyful place and a really um, introspective place as well to look at our, our Jewish history and um, really question it, think about it, and celebrate it. Oh, I love that. Thank you very, very much. You know, that's one thing that I really, really appreciated when I first came to the J. The Black Box Theater is beautiful. And it's a very different experience to be watching some storytelling, uh, you know, in like a thrust or stadium, you know, however they have it set up. But to be that close to the actors as opposed to, you know, kind of like a proscenium main stage or, or whatnot. Well, uh, Michelle, now you've worked with many different theaters in the St. Louis area. What do you think sets NJT apart? I would have to say that um, what sets it apart for me is, once again, going through the Jewish viewpoint, but finding what is so universal. So we start with a narrow, theoretically narrowed viewpoint or lens or kaleidoscope, but we expand it. And what I think is really amazing is that even though it's the new Jewish theater, people of all cultures find something that really is significantly impactful for them. I think it's very universal. And, um, and the stories also run the gamut from just brokenhearted stories to joyous stories to silly stories, you know, and, it, and I think that's a good indicator of the Jewish experience and also just human experience, you know, people's lives. And I think that's a really universal um, 
way to look at life, that there's the, the highs and the lows, there's the frightening things and the joyful things. And I think new Jewish theater really pushes in all directions and finds something universal for all people. Oh, I think that's so uh, wonderfully well said. All storytelling seems to be about an exploration of the human condition. And I think there's probably not a more exciting way to ingest that uh, than when you're sitting in a community of people and watching it happen three-dimensionally live right in front of you. So uh, I have a real, real passion for theater. So as you reflect so far on a, on a 22-year career with New Jewish Theater, you think about um, the kaleidoscope of shows that you have been working on. When it comes to your own designs and, and the artistry that went into those designs, are there one or two shows that really stand out for you artistically that, that was just like a favorite because of, of the unique either challenge or the unique opportunity that you had in the design? I would say as far as the actual designs, it's in addition to the experience, but the designs themselves, two shows that really stand out to me would have to be um, Shlemiel the first and Yentl. And, and the reason both of those are set in shtetl life and it's something where I could look back at my own family's photos and see the little details. And I can look at any other research photos or people's photos in their homes. And I see those details. And those two shows were really unique to me about Eastern European shtetl life it, because it, those shows sort of flowed out of me. And it was just like something so, you know, in my bones. And that was exciting to me. Oh, that's wonderful. And, and so kind of a similar question, but, but shifting a little bit more to the text and to the, the storytelling and the experience of the show as, as an audience member, um, you've got a lot to choose from having seen so many, so many of the, the catalog of shows within the NJT canon. So again, one or two titles that, that really stand out to you, uh, whether it was the performances or the story itself or the way it affected you or the audience? Um, I would have to say, thinking of a couple that just pop into my mind, uh, The Whipping Man. The Whipping Man is like seared into my heart and my soul. And it really addresses the truth about what faith really is. Uh, and, and it also addresses, when you watch it, you see the... Con- continuing inequities in this country that seems so vivid, you know, even today, it's not, it's a period piece that is so painfully relevant. So the whipping man is one that I, I will never forget. Um, another, another one that was so dear to me because it's so beautiful because it's such an every man story was the uncle Vanya retelling life sucks. <laughs> and, I just felt that that ensemble of actors and the directing uh, by Eddie Caulfield and the play itself, because I do love Uncle Vanya, I just felt it was just the ultimate everyman story. It was funny. It was heartbreaking. It was all those things. They had a bathtub and, uh, you know, and firefly lights and all sorts of magic that was so normal, but magical. So I loved Life Sucks. I appreciate that. Uh, just so many images are going through my head. I, I, I know the Matthew Lopez play, and that's incredibly powerful. Um, but just hearing hearing you talk about the things that you connect with, those themes and everything. Uh, and that's what that's what we're doing, you know, for our audiences. Uh, you do not have to be someone, you know, who's connected to the artistry of theater to take in its its power. Um, you just need to be human <laughs> and, and uh, just really appreciate good storytelling. So... The last question I had for you is, I think people in general understand the role of the costumer. I mean, you are going to put clothes on the performers, you know, and, and, and everything that's on stage is, is a specific choice. But I don't, I don't think people quite understand the intricacy, the research, um, the technical skill, the artistic skill. So if you could just take a moment to Kind of just walk us through your process as a storyteller with costumes. Okay. Well, first, slightly disagreeing, people don't really understand what I do for a Fair enough. <laughs> Hashtag fair enough. <laughs> it isn't just about, can't people go to their closet and get clothes? Right. I do an enormous amount of research. 
research, research, research. And that's also where my passion lies, because it makes me feel that I'm helping to tell this story. I have, I'm serving the text. I'm serving what the director's vision is. Research is huge for me. And it's not just clothing research. It's socioeconomic research, historical research, geopolitical research, what is happening in the places that these plays are happening. I need to know that, once again, in my bones before I can make a choice of why does she have those shoes? Has she walked four miles? You know, why, why is this this way? What preceded that? What is their economic situation? What is their living situation? All of that research really is the starting point. After that, I also then consult with the director a lot, a lot of conversations. A lot of the conversations are not about clothes. Once again, it's me asking, you know, when was the person's last meal? When, you know, how long have they had the things they've had? When did they move last? You know, a lot of really intricate questions to build this world from the bottom up. And uh, so I speak a lot with the director. I, I like to work and collaborate with actors a lot, which is um, helps me sometimes, depending on the actor, I might say, are you a pants or a skirt person, you know, as far as your character. Uh, and then I will do black and white drawings. And once the director and I go over the black and white drawings and with a very fancy equipment, a pencil, <laughs> and then I re erase, and sometimes I'll put my coffee on it. It's okay. It's nothing precious. Um, and then we'll, and I'll scribble notes all over it. And then I'll go back and put color on that once we, as a team, the design team with the lighting designer and the scene designer and the sound designer too, that they don't really have so much to do with the color palette. But as the design team comes together, we work on our color palette. I'll add color to the renderings. And then I start shopping and building and sourcing and borrowing and all the things I need to do to get the show on stage as truthfully, punctually, and, um, and, and the, on budget as possible. <laughs> so it's a, it's a lot of little steps that fit together. Yeah, I, I'm always amazed, you know, whether it's a, a scenic designer, a costume designer, uh, just what they have to do in order to do that research, uh, research and, and think about resource materials that, that are going to, you know, collaborate with their own imagination and their own artistry. And, and then, and then, I mean, you're always taking something from, you know, a concept an idea, and then you're bringing it to, to physical fruition. It's, it's really an amazing uh, process. The, the whole technical side of theater has, has always been just amazing to me. Well, let me, th- let me throw one more question at you just a, in general, as we celebrate 25 years uh, of NJT, uh, what are you most excited about to celebrate? Or what are you most proud of in celebrating 25 years? I am so proud, and I get a little bit clamped here. I'm so proud of, of all of the stories we've told and all of the people that have come up to me and said, this reminded me of this, something, or I really love this, or honestly... I didn't understand that or it wasn't funny enough. You know, I love the the response from the audience. People send me clippings of reviews and I love that all of those things. I love I love that we touch people and it means so much to me and that we make people think and reflect and that means so much to me. So I really love being in concert with the audience and I'm excited to keep doing that. These stories are so wonderful and so important and there's such a variety of stories and I feel like we're just beginning with what we can do. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Th- thanks for just being here today and, and, and helping me set up uh, the preview to, to the celebration. Uh, I loved all of your answers. It was, that was really great. Well, you know, we wouldn't be celebrating 25 years uh, without Kathleen Sitzer. She is the founder of the New Jewish Theater. Uh, she took over in 1997 uh, when she was coordinating what was then the Shalom Players, and she helmed it uh, for a number of years, 20 plus years, uh, moving forward. And so um, Kathleen and her legacy will be there Sunday night, so that's certainly one reason uh, to attend. I also want to just pay tribute to Gloria Spitzer. She's our honorary chair of the committee that was helping us 
plan and fundraise for this event, as well as the newly formed NJT Theater Guild. Now, folks, we hope that you will attend what is undoubtedly going to be a blowout party. Now, because it's a fundraiser, it is a ticketed event, so you have to pay to play. But remember, it's all going towards a really good cause. You know, NJT is looking to uh, replace their flooring. Uh, We're looking at a number of new uh, lighting instruments, uh, maybe a new uh, light board, some microphones. There's there's lots of technology that we can upgrade there, as well as just generally supporting the coming uh, 2024 season. So you can go to newjewishtheater.org to get your tickets and or to just donate uh, to the general cause. Well, that's it for now. I want to once again thank my guest, Michelle Seiler, the costume designer at NJT, for being here with me. Stay tuned for more Cultural Arts Corner podcasts as we look forward to a multiplicity of events that are still yet to come in 2023. Well, let me leave you with this. You know, the times that we live in can be scary, they can be lonely, and they can be unpredictable. I hope that you will let the cultural arts at the J expand your imagination, connect you to a larger community, and help us increase your empathy as we expose you to books, theater, and cinema that will help make you a better human being. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.